Welcome to the Startup Showcase. I'm your fill-in host, Sean Fralick, host of Technori's The Feed. And this is Technori Live on WGN Radio, where Chicago's top tech founders and entrepreneurs come to share their story. Today on the show, we're going to double it up. We have Vishal Shah and Caitlin McAllister. Vishal is the co-founder, and Caitlin is the managing director of Catapult Chicago. Did I get that right? Indeed. Perfect. Yes. So in the Chicago tech incubator scene, I think some of the homegrown names or the household names are uh, 1871 and Tech Nexus. So tell us about Catapult and what sets it apart from the other tech incubators in Chicago. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's exciting in Chicago to be able to have be in good company with 1871, with Tech Nexus, and you know that now there are so many more. Uh, when we started Catapult Chicago, it was kind of uh, a thing that we wanted it to truly help companies grow. And so there's no real agenda when it comes to profiting or growing from these companies. Our true agenda is to create a community where these companies can grow. So. Uh, a couple of things that we've done really different is, number one, it is a nonprofit. We bootstrapped uh, Catapult Chicago. So we've kind of grown with like the m mindset of some of these Midwest tech companies as well. Um, and the other thing is the companies that are in Catapult basically vote for the next company that's coming in. So what ends up happening is you start to get all of these companies fighting for that company in because they have buy-in. They actually you know, invited and voted for this person to come in or this business to come in. So they'll think of them when they're out meeting with someone else and help really connect the dots. And we really see this sense of community. Um, and it's more than just office space at the end of the day. Yeah. So how did you decide to go with that peer reviewed route with Catapult? Yeah. So, um, you know, first off, when we started Catapult, we all had full-time jobs. I, I was actually running a startup. Ryan was involved with a company. And um, so the inception was, we're gonna start to bring companies on that where the people are smart. We had people that, you know, graduated from MIT, they were uh, experienced beyond whatever we were. And uh, a lot of it was, hey, let's bet on the individuals that are there. Um, we didn't have a fund or a venture side where we had to hit certain goals on that side. And so it was, I don't think, I haven't really heard of this uh, model existing anywhere else. So it's one of those things when you're at that stage, it's, hey, let's try something. It makes sense at a high level and let's see how it works. And honestly, the quality of companies, and Caitlin can talk to this as well, the quality of companies are spectacular for the the size that we're looking for, anywhere from five to 15 employees, essentially. Uh, but we've had amazing companies come through. So it's one of those things now that, hey, we don't want to change it because it's worked so well. It's really a founder-driven organization. So we're four founders by founders. You know, Vishal and Ryan, as he said, were founders of their own company, um, looking for a space that would support them as founders. So. Um, now, after four and a half years, we have this amazing um, cohort of alumni that, again, pay it forward, pay it back mentality of like, I've been in your shoes and I know how to help you. Yeah. So you've already said that both of you are founders. So why would you want to take what I would already imagine is a skim amount of free time to build an incubator? Like, Why did you feel the need? What was the inspiration? So I think... Every founder is irrational, right? So, sure. Um, oh, yeah. So that, that kind Promise. of ch check the box. It's <laughs> funny. We, you know, at this stage when we started it, um, it was one of those things where we'd ask people and tell them, hey, you know, we have this opportunity. And we, we connected with Foley and Lardner, who at the time had a floor that was vacant. They, they were, it was under their lease, but it was when the economy wasn't doing well. They had to lay off a lot of um, attorneys or they just had access capacity that they weren't using. And we met one of, um, a couple of the like younger attorneys there and Galen and Chris. And, you know, we we're just talking about uh, our idea of bringing a group of companies together. And, you know, they're like, hey, you know, I'll give you a 78% chance that we could get a, you know, <laughs> part of the floor in this building. One thing led to another. And you kind of had this opportunity that you're not going to, give away, you know? And so we had all this space and then we said, hey, we got to fill it up now. 
So, <laughs> I mean, there's no real rational thought, but that's what we like to do. We love to build things and continue to grow. And since now I'm out of the day to day, Caitlin has been taking over and has kind of taken it to the next level and can share a lot more about what that is as well. Yeah. So Caitlin, let's uh, fill in the blank there. What is the process to get to that next level with an incubator? Oh my gosh. So yeah, we're, the other thing that we have a lot of flexibility is that we're not a traditional incubator in the fact that we don't take equity or invest. So it gives our companies a little breathing room. They get a little bit more freedom to move about the cabin. Um, and I think what sets us apart, as we've mentioned, is our community. So we have this amazing network. We have uh, basically 90 founders, uh, 40 companies, almost 800 employees, um, and our companies have raised $145 million over the last five years. So again, it's this um, really rich collection of not only founders, but companies um, and this knowledge. So what do we do with that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I think um, now I came on about nine months ago. Um, April Lane was the um, is still our executive director and kind of set all of these things in place. Um, but you kind of have to look at, okay, now we have all these things, where do we go next? And I think um, we've reached a critical mass where we have so many people that, you know, Google Groups, great, right? But getting a system in place to help organize them, really create a, an alumni membership program that when we offboard companies, they love Catapult, they love their, you know, their peers and we stay in contact, but how can we, you know, continue to get their mentorship and their buy-in um, to give back to the companies in the future? Um, also, you know, I think we have a lot of companies that know about us, right, that come to us maybe at a little bit later stage. They have too many people to fit into an office. Our small offices fit four people. Our large offices fit eight. You can always squeeze a little bit more in there. But if they come to us with 15 employees and they're scaling, we have a two-year model. So having a membership program is something that we're implementing soon um, that again can maybe allow them to participate in programming and still be kind of a member of that amazing network um, while not holding office space. Okay so yeah you said the the, the two-year model so is Catapult I mean it even says that in the name I'm thinking of the springing forward so is Catapult meant to be more of a transitional incubator meant for places to grow and then get out onto the next thing? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's exactly right it's where you know, they have something that works, they have traction, their team, their product is at a, at a nice level, they've got to build it out. But generally, after they hit that 10, 15 employee mark, they get their own office space, they, you know, they start to scale their businesses. And LearnCore is a perfect example of that, that we, I think, had 12 employees, we left and now we're over 30. Um, and so it serves at that crucial time where you have no idea what's going to happen. Are you going to scale to are you going to double your team are you going to stay flat um so that's really where you need support but you don't need like someone holding your hand because you've gone this far and so you still need the ability to close the door and do your own thing but then come out and collaborate on hey i've got this marketing challenge let me talk to this person that faced it that's four doors down um, so you need that quiet space but also the collaborative side as well and, and I'd just say, you know, Catapult, like where we're going, we, we're very, we have our, our space and our goal is to create uh, a community of the best companies. So we're not gonna expand into several floors and, and just to fill it up, uh, but we want the absolute best companies. But the way that we're gonna expand our reach is through the, the membership programs, through the things that we can contribute to companies wherever they are, because it's much more than just office space. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're, you've watched a lot of companies come and go, uncertainty, I think, is something that all entrepreneurs have to grow comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And I imagine a lot of the same issues are faced by these companies that come through Catapult. I was hoping you could talk a little bit about what are some of the most common growing pains that you've seen companies come in with as they enter Catapult and how they work through them? <laughs> That's a great question. So, um, you know, I think it's it's a variety of things, right? So like, like Vishal said, I think um, we focus on having partners as well. We have 
almost 12 corporate sponsors um, that provide, again, mentorship and guidance in a lot of these different areas. So each sponsor is in a different vertical. Um, So when companies kind of come up to a bump of like sales, right? Sales is always a big topic. Um, We have Walker Sands that can provide brand, communication, public relation, guidance and support. Um, You know, product management, we just had, I was telling Vishal earlier, um, we have uh, our Everest program with two companies, Red Shelf and Cleverbridge, who aren't sponsors, but again, provide mentorship. We just did uh, an Everest program on product management and how to kind of organize your sprints and how do you wrap your mind when you're scaling, right? And all of a sudden your product is taking off. You've got too much on your plate. How, How do you sort through your notes and actually get a system that kind of makes that more agile and streamlines that. Um, Those are the kind of things that, you know, when you're in the midst of actually building your business, they kind of get missed or skipped. A lot of it goes down to scaling because at at this point they've got their five clients that they serve or, you know, the products at a certain point, but how do I make sure my product's going to be stable when I have 50, 100 clients, you know, how do I get from five to 50 clients even? And so those are the challenges like marketing, project management. And it's, um, I think, which is exciting because it's not like, hey, what idea should I do to start a company? It's, it's definitely past that. It's more on the refinement side. Mm-hmm. Um, it reminds me of a conversation I had with Bunker Labs over at 1871. And for those who don't know, they're an incubator specifically for veteran run companies. And one of the points they made with working with startups is, kind of pulling back some of the expectations and realizing that, hey, maybe a million dollar investment sounds great, but it might not be what your company needs. So what kind of guidance do you give companies when it comes to seeking investment, realizing how much scalability is really possible for the particular company? Yeah, um, we, we trust that the entrepreneurs can make their their own decisions in a sense but we want to give them the right resources to ask bounce ideas off of people to and so we have you know um clever bridge and red like these are companies that are at like five levels above that have gone through all the challenges that we kind of connect them with to help make the decisions but you know that topic of um raising capital isn't the answer to everything and i think um the beauty for where we're located is, you get all the different perspectives. You get the perspective of someone that raised you know, $50 million versus someone that didn't raise anything. Mm-hmm. And is there a right answer? There's, the beauty is there's not a right answer, but, um, but they kind of use that information, what happens in case A, case B, to make that right decision. Um, so we wanna just create that environment where they can get the answers, but at the end of the day, it's their, their call. Um, but that, that's a great topic. We could talk. We could have another session on oh, sure. raising capital because um, it hits headlines, but it's not always the right thing. Right. Yeah. It's flashy and it's pretty, <laughs> but yeah. it might not be what's best. Right. And I imagine that's a tough pill to take for yeah. many companies in the early going because then it's, well, what kind of motiva- motivational force do you find if it's not about the capital? And I imagine the catapult space with all the input and uh, the conversations and the cross pollination that companies are given the freedom and the space to kind of find uh, a, a mission that's worthy for. Yeah, everyone. you know, and I think like as we already mentioned, like entrepreneurship is not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. They're all nuts. Like I am not from a tech background, so it's been amazing to watch these companies grow. Mm -hmm. Um, Surprising, shocking, fun, right? But I think that's what, for me, being a new person to Catapult as well, like our community is so strong that you watch these startups weather the storm. Like they have the highest highs and the lowest lows and we celebrate those together and we hold their hand when they need it. Uh, We have founder forum where they all get in a room and that's nothing that I have anything to do with that's founder driven, founder supported. So they have this amazing support network of people, like I said, have done that before them and can kind of help them make those weighty decisions. At the end of the day, you're that's on your shoulders. You're making it for yourself. But it is really a beautiful community. It's a it's a family. They really care for each other. And there's a keg there in case. Really yeah. Yeah, we right. always have yeah. booze. I saw something about <laughs> Wii tournaments yeah. on the website. Yes, yeah. yeah. You guys got the Switch in the office yet? The Nintendo Switch? 
No, we, we don't. don't have that. We're, we want them to be working. You know? Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> there is a limit to how much always fun you can pong, have. Though. Yeah. Ping pong is always available. But, um, no, I mean, it, it's exciting. It's And, you know, we're, I think, year six into it. So the whole environment has evolved like crazy in, in a good way. Um, and so... You know, we just kind of redid the whole space. Um, so Brand we welcome new. everyone to come by, check it out. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming in and teaching our listeners more about Catapult. Uh, before we go, I'll give you the last word about um, why a startup might be interested in Catapult, where they can learn more about it. Yeah, I mean, as I, everything that we've already said, it's a really supportive community um, full of really fun people uh, with serious people ready to scale. So you've got a door, a place to put your head down and work, um, but have a little fun as well. And we're always looking for people to join our community. So please contact us. Happy to set up a tour and show you the space. And your website? www.catapultchicago.com. All right. Thanks so much, you two. Thank, Thank you. you.